Hey, you heard Derek and our meteorologist all week. We just have to make it through these storms, and then it's going to be great weather for this weekend and next week. But first, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Lang. And we begin with a really disturbing case of animal abuse. A $1,000 reward is now being offered after a cat is found shot with an arrow. So the animal survived but needed emergency surgery after someone attacked it, and Dearborn police saved it. Friends of the animals of Metro Detroit posted pictures of Santana on its website. The group says that vets treated the cat at Lincoln Park Veterinary Hospital and affiliated veterinary emergency service. Doctors removed the arrow and saved Santana's life. He is recovering, and the hope is that he will be able to be soon uh, adopted. Anyone with information is asked to call the Friends of Animals of Metro Detroit. And also new this morning, a Jeep stolen off the lot at a Chrysler plant in Detroit early this morning ends up in the backyard of a home in Indian Village. Yeah, talk about a rude awakening for one family. Uh, this is yet another instance of thieves targeting vehicles that are fresh off the assembly line. Fox News' Charlie Langton spoke with that homeowner. It's not every day that you wake up and you find that there is a stolen car in your backyard. Well, it happened here. This is Indian Village on Kerchival and Burns. You can see from the damage here, Police are telling us that this Jeep was stolen from the Connor plant, which is only about two miles or so behind me. And then somehow they came this way on Kerchival, smashed through this fence, and then I, and then they landed here in James's yard. James Beauvais, James, just what happened here? Uh, we woke up uh, to the sound of the car coming through the uh, fence. And we looked over there, and there's a car in my vegetable garden. Yeah, now take a look. at this. this is not only a vegetable garden here. You've been here 49 years. What did they destroy? They destroyed, of course, a few roses here. They clipped that 100-year-old hawthorn. I hope it'll be okay. And they did damage to maybe 25, 30 beautiful hostas, some of them 40 years old. Now the car here, this is a Jeep. You can see it still has the plastic on it uh, because it was just uh, right from the, the plant. Uh, Detroit police are on the scene. It happened around 5.30 or so Thursday morning. But Detroit police, we believe that uh, at least one occupant, possibly more, but at least one occupant then after he tried to get out of your property, uh, he just took off on foot. And that's what the police are looking for now. So again, stolen Jeep, brand new, right off the Chrysler plant. Ended up in James's backyard, lots of damage. There is the remains of the Jeep, and the suspect is on the run. I am here in Indian Village, Charlie Langton, Fox 2 News. Well, Fox 2 also following a developing story overnight, a high-speed chase coming to a crashing end on Detroit's west side. Another crime involving being a stolen vehicle. Police took a man and a teenager into custody. After briefly trying to escape the scene, our video shows two vehicles towed away in the area of Warren and Rutherford. And one of them was a stolen sedan with severe front-end damage. That's because the, st the suspects crashed into a transformer. Investigators tell us that this actually started in Wyandotte, where police tried to pull over the suspects at one point the stolen car reached more than 100 miles per hour. Now, last check, there were still around 100 customers without power. And also new this morning, Michigan State Police shut down westbound I-696 at Southfield Road after reports of a shooting. Troopers searching for evidence on the freeway. Right now, there's not a lot of information, and it's not clear if anyone was hurt. All lanes are back open, and we'll continue to follow this one and bring you the latest on air and online. And it has been nearly a week since a Detroit police officer was shot in the line of duty. Now there is a reward to help find those suspects. Fox News' Robert Murdoch is live with on who they're looking for and how that officer is doing. Robin, good morning. Good morning, Brandon and Amy. Right now, Detroit police, they are searching for three suspects connected to the shooting. They really do hope a $1,000 reward will get someone to speak up or the surveillance video that we are about to show you will get the suspects to give up now that their faces are everywhere. It's taken a lot to identify some decent video sources to get some good still images that we could produce. Now that Detroit police have them, they are sharing them with the hope this security footage and the pictures pulled from it will get these three suspects off the streets. The video shows them running through a funeral home parking lot near Meringue and White Hill moments after an officer is shot. Almost a week later, they are still on the loose and the officer is still on the mend. Assistant Chief Charles 
Charles Fitzgerald updated the press on his progress. He is uh, doing his absolute best to recover. Uh, he is a, a fighter like all of our officers are here in the city, so continue prayers for him. All three male suspects seen in these just released photos are described as being in their late teens or early 20s with a slim build. Investigators say one of them fired at DPD officers while they were fleeing an illegal marijuana grow operation the suspects had just broken into. Police then shot back inside that building. This dozens of pot plants, fertilizer, lights, and even an irrigation system. We have collected some uh, not only fingerprints but blood samples. Uh, we do not believe the person was struck. We believe the person was injured jumping a fence. Evidence that will prove pivotal as this proceeds. Now, according to investigators, it was shot spotter technology that detected the live gunfire just after midnight last Friday and had Detroit police on that east side scene within just two minutes, eventually leading to the violent chain of events. That area, we believe they're probably still in that area. So that's why we're hoping the community can come forward and help us out. Now, that assistant chief says that those three suspects should be considered armed and dangerous. So if you happen to see them, do not approach them. Instead, call Detroit police or you can call Crime Stoppers and you can remain anonymous. And of course, remember, there is that $1,000 reward that is now up for grabs. We are live outside Detroit Police Headquarters. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Robin is encouraging to know that that officer is healing, but this is one of several incidents where we've seen officers under attack in Detroit. You go back to last year with Officer Lauren Quartz, who was shot and killed while on duty, but then we have another officer who was in a, uh, a party store and attacked for his gun. So uh, overall, how are officers doing? Because this is one of those jobs where it is dangerous, but you have to pack up everything and, and then still get to work and protect people. Yeah, you know, and the chief of police, he has repeatedly said, Brandon, how uh, his officers are experience, experiencing violence that they have never seen before, that the people that they encounter are making uh, impulse decisions, very dangerous decisions that are putting his officers under constant threat. So uh, this is a very ser scary situation for officers out there, and hopefully uh, they can get these three suspects off of the street sooner rather than later. Back to you, Brandon. Robin, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amy. Well, Robin always does such a great job out there. Mm -hmm. Looks like she has some nice weather right now, right. but we're heading out this afternoon, and so we want to know what we're looking at. Weather Authority tracking the potential for some pretty strong storms later today. The key phrase you said there is right now. We had a great start to the day, 60 degrees, had some sun, some clouds, but the storms are already sweeping across the western part of the state this morning. Weather Authority Derek Kevra is with the forecast. Derek, uh, when will these move into the area, and how long will they be here? It looks like about noon is when we're going to start to see some activity in our western community. Communities. A lot of us, though, between 1 and 2 o'clock uh, for those storms to arrive. Now, the strong winds and small hail, those are the two big things that we're watching for. Those are distinct possibilities. And there's a chance that we could see some evening redevelopment. So behind the initial line of storms, we could see some more rain on the back end. That remains a little uncertain. This is a certainty, though, with those storms stretching from Saginaw through Lansing. Downpours, thunder and lightning and gusty winds right now, what we're seeing. No severe thunderstorm warnings, though, along the, uh, along the front, along the line of storms right now, which is very very interesting note. Now the winds are blowing at about 40 miles an hour, so that's a little bit under the warning criteria. But that all said, even when there's not a warning, it doesn't mean these storms aren't um, uh, impacting a lot of the day here. Now they're going up to about 20,000 feet in the atmosphere. Generally speaking, when we see really severe weather, it's 30,000 to 40,000 feet. So this is remaining about 10,000 feet under that. But it's still going to be wet. And it's still going to be heavy rain, and it's still going to be some pretty gusty winds with all of this thunder and lightning included over the next couple of hours. 1 to 2 o'clock is when it really jumps up there. You can see it 2, 3, 4 o'clock remains on the high side. Here's the redevelopment that is possible. We could see that on the back end in the evening hours between, say, 4 and 7 o'clock. Let's look ahead. After today's rain and storms move through, we got a good stretch here taking us into the Woodward Dream Cruise weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday should all be dry. Saturday looks absolutely beautiful with a high near 80 degrees. 
and no rain in the forecast. But if you want to track the rain, we got a great tool for you to do it, and it won't cost you anything. Free, the app, the Fox 2 Weather Authority app. Download it. you got the interactive radar. You can zoom all the way down to your house and see if you're dealing with the rain. If you're at work, you can check your house. If you're at your house, you can check your work if you wanted to. Also, we update those videos multiple times a day. Head to the App Store, search Fox 2 Weather, download it for free. Guys, back to you. So this morning, the Gross Point Public School System and the Gross Point Education Association have reached a new deal for the upcoming school year. Yeah, the two sides have been struggling to reach a new agreement for several months. The previous contract expired on Tuesday. The union was seeking a raise in pay, a change in the sick day policy, and the addition of paid time off. So far, no details about the terms of the new agreement have been released. The two sides are keeping things under wraps until it is ratified.